All right, welcome back to another video, guys. Yeah, so what I'm going to be doing today is, uh, as I left it before, obviously I've got most of the block all stripped down, ready to go. We've got the inlet manifold off here, and we've got the exhaust manifold still to come off here. But like I showed in the previous video, if you can see there, the head bolts for a lot of these just sheared off completely, like one there, you've got two there. I think I've got that lower one off. That one there, you can see, is completely shredded off. You can see there. So yeah, I bought an Irwin bolt gripper kit to try and get those off. But what I'm gonna try and do is, I'm gonna try and get this uh, this head off, off the actual uh, block here. And we're gonna get this head out into the workshop and put it up on the bench basically so we can start the rebuild process. But obviously I wanna have a look inside this just to see if there's any obvious damage or wear or anything that's uh, giving us gonna give us any issues. But hopefully the plan is to rebuild it completely anyway and go right through it all, uh, you know, lap the valves, everything. So hopefully it should be almost, you know, an 80% rebuild minus, you know, a few parts that we're gonna, we're gonna stick the standard parts back in, but we're gonna refresh all the gaskets, all the seals, anything we can ref refresh basically. Um, I'm gonna use the standard valves and pistons, obviously, and things like that, put all that back in. But as for all the seals and things like that, we are gonna swap them out. Cam belt's gonna get redone and just a general refresh right there we go guys so a little bit more progress so we've got the uh, the cam cover off there's basically all these outer bolts here and then where the plastic spark plug cover was this one here there's a few bolts in there so you've got to take that off and then when you're underneath that there's a few more bolts underneath that as well which is on the bottom so well the underside of that tray basically which is the cam cover and then as you can see it exposes all the cams so as I'm looking at it, it looks pretty good. I can't see any major scores on anything or any major problems, hopefully. So I'm hoping they're all normal wear marks and things. I don't actually know, but hopefully, looking at it, it's looking really nice. It's nice and golden. As I've been told, it's supposed to be a good sign, so it's been service regularly and looked after there's no sludging in loads of crap so yeah what i'm going to do is i'm going to crack on doing this i'm going to take out to try and take this head off and like i said get this on the bench basically so we can get this ready to be rebuilt as you can see we've got the head on the bench here um it was an absolute nightmare to try and get all this off and then move it and things like that so we've got two trays down We've got the cam covers over here. We've got the full head here. But as you can see, we've got all the um, we've got all the valves here. So what we're going to do is today, I'm going to try and get all this head cleaned up, and um, if we can, get the top of the cams off and try and release all the valves out of the head, basically, so we can get these cleaned up, reground. And put back in but i don't know if that'll all be done in this one video but we're just gonna go from here like i say i've never done this before i'm learning it completely off this video and um just going from what i've seen on youtube so yeah don't obviously copy what i've done but this is what i've been shown and obviously the best uh form of practice is to keep everything clean put everything back clean and work with a clean base basically so that's what we're going to do i'm going to use some wd-40 so that nothing rusts um then everything can keep greased and it can form well it can you know create a nice clean surface basically for any of these items and it won't upset anything afterwards hopefully anyway so yeah wd-40 and then i've just got a very well a slight abrasive sponge basically and then that's going to be used to clean up this head and the valves hopefully so we go from there we'll clean the, the main head gasket area off and um, see what we can do with this see what we can transform this from like you can see I don't know if you can see it on the camera but the valves are very very black very very dirty very sooty so hopefully this will help and we can re 
lap these valves um, once they're ready to go back basically but let's just try and get this cleaned up. I think it's just mainly surface rust, not surface rust, surface like scum if you like but it's going to take some time, it's going to take some cleaning like you know just back and forth, back and forth being very meticulous with it um, and just seeing if basically we're going to check if it's warped at all as well so I've got a straight edge just using like a metal ruler, something like that. Uh, we're gonna run it across. I've followed a, an adducer video basically that will hopefully help. That um, shows how to show any warpage on the head there. But um, hopefully we don't have any issues like that. And hopefully, just going for a simple clean build basically. A refresh. But yeah. Let's try and get this done. I don't know when the last time this was probably done. It was probably a long time ago by the state of all these gaskets. They're absolutely disgusting. They're literally just hanging on in there. So I think this will definitely improve some compression on these cylinders. See, this is this is quite a fine grit. This, this is probably like a, an a thousand grit, maybe more. Um, so we're not actually, you know, taking much off the surface here. It's literally just a very bare basic surface. There's no metal being removed, so we're not going to lower the compression or anything, do anything up to upset it. But um, yeah, hopefully we can uh, get a good result just on this stage. So as you can see there, it's taking most of the surface crud off. So it's already looking a lot better already. But this is probably gonna take a few attempts and you definitely don't wanna see that. So I'll show you when I'm done. There we go guys, so yeah, we've got the head pretty much cleaned up now. Uh, finished it off with like a 1500 grit sandpaper using the uh, WD-40 as well to sort of wet sand it just to get some of these blemishes out and any high spots, anything like that. We're, so it's kind of been leveled off if that if that makes sense. So just clean the, the initial layer of scum from the previous gasket basically. So that's hopefully helped with the next sort of uh, gasket going on top of that. Then the next thing we need to do uh, from the Adducer main website, we need to check this isn't warped basically so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on their, their YouTube channel so I've saved the video and then what we need is a straight edge something that is a bit of a solid metal or something like that and the only thing I can think of is my steel rule so this is going to be pretty good to have so you can put it across the block wherever you need to put it basically and then what you need is something called a feeler gauge, something like that. Um, I'm not sure the actual name of it, but yeah. Thickness gauge, there you go. So feeler gauge, thickness gauge, whatever you want to call it. Right, so looking at the video, what they're going to do first is they've gone across the block, so going that way, and they're doing three lines of it. So one on this edge, one down the centre and one down this edge basically, that's the first three and they're using a 0.05 millimetre feeler gauge so let's have a look 
Zero point zero five, that's what we're after. So we are after this one here. So we're after that one there, if you can see that. Zero point zero five, number two on my feeler gauge. So we're gonna put this here. And then we're going to play the video. And then obviously the reason why we're doing this, I uh, say so if it is warped, it is going to need it skimming. So. No, absolutely fine. No problems with that at all. Right, so with that all being squared up and all absolutely fine along there, we're actually going to go and actually need to get the uh, the valves out now. So I'm going to have to flip this over, get the cams out, and lay these out neatly and tidy so they obviously don't get mixed up and we know which one is for what side, basically. We've got the exhaust cam and we've got the inlet cam on this one because it's a 16 valve. So... I'm going to put everything here that's on this other tray, this is going to be my sort of clean tray if you like, and then this is the dirty tray that we're sort of cleaning the head up and keeping everything together. As you can see it's an absolute mess so I'm going to get all this cleaned up and then ready to put any parts off here, onto here, organised, ready to go back. Right now we've got our area all cleaned up with some towels down. Uh, just waiting for any oil obviously to absorb into that so it's nice and clean and we can lay everything out on there we've got the head flipped over so this is the top of it here we've got the inlet side this side exhaust side this side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and keep everything in this orientation basically so inlet this side exhaust at the back so basically this is how it would be looking at if it was in the car as well so I'm going to keep everything to that method if you like that's how you got to be with these things you got to be just really methodical and keep everything in one order so as if you were always looking at it one direction so that you know that this is the side that you're always taking it apart on or looking at and the way you were laying it out when you put it aside so inlet cam exhaust cam and uh yeah we're going to get these bolts off and take this apart and then we'll take off the exhaust side and hopefully this will come out nice and neat and tidy in one way and we can put this over there ready to be disassembled from the exhaust valves and the inlet valves and we can lap them and hopefully go from there so yeah we've got the exhaust gasket just there as you can see that's really chewed up and really bad so it is a multi-layer one which is good but you can tell it's definitely had its uh time to go basically it's so bad along here obviously you can see it's completely split and that's just a mo matter of time until that was actually uh eaten into one of the cinders which it probably is here so yeah that could be a big big problem definitely uh exhaust leak maybe coming up through there so that's not good so yeah good thing we're uh, doing this so that can go there got the timing marks just there if you can see there's one there and one there right so what we're going to do is we're going to try and take we're going to take all these bolts out here um, this one back that was in there right so we've got 10 mil bolts all the way through the centers here and then we've got star drives through the middle and around the outer edges here so what we're going to do is we're going to get the 10 mil ready so we've got that and then we want the star bit just for reference guys it's a th40 bit that you'll need a star bit and that's for doing these outer ones here so that's what fits in there and then hopefully we can start to get this head off. Move that, falls over.
try and rest this against something. All it wants to do is slide. There we go, so that's one. What we might actually do actually, just for the torque, because this is sliding, if I get my impact. Good start with this and go from there. bolt here um, has actually uh, stripped the threads so I'm going to have to think of a way to try and get this one out but the other five came out here I need to get two out here by the looks of it and these ones here but I'm going to try and work on this one and see if I can, not, see if I can get that one out basically um, and see what tools I've got there we go guys and like that we've got the, uh, the stubborn bolt out so I've had to smash a spline drive bit into it and then use the impact just slowly wrapping it just now and again just going like that basically just a bit 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 and it just it eventually gave out so yeah we're gonna have to try and find another one of these bolts before we assemble it which is gonna be an absolute pain in the ass but hopefully we can find something so I'll leave that in there line up just there now to get the rest out. They were definitely done up very tight. Oh dear. So nerve wracking just doing that because people it just feels like they're gonna snap on you when you do that. But I seem to be winning so far. So we're gonna line these up again with the bolts over there.
seem to be getting somewhere guys so I think these are the last two bolts other than all the uh, hex bolts so they went underneath this cover didn't they so they're there so we'll put those kind of underneath it so that's top So what we need now is that 10 mil, like I said before, and we're going to zip off all those bolts there and uh, do the same thing. These are definitely a lot easier to get undone. That's all of them cracked loose. And all we need to do now is line them all up. All right, so we'll go back to front. This being the back. Run that. There we go guys, so that's the inlet cam taken out. Put these in a particular order. I think you can just pull these out with a magnet, so that should be alright. So I'll get a magnet here, clean it off a bit. That's it. So that's one of those. And then as I'll grab you over here. So that's one of them there. That's what they look like. And then that's inside one of the uh, 
bottom of the inlet valve there where you've got the spring, the collet and the, uh, the little uh, keeper basically that's holding that all in place. So we're going to obviously need to pre compress that, push them out, get the pins out and uh, we can push the valve out going out that way basically. So yeah, we're going to get all these out and I'll come back when I've got all these out. There we go guys, so we've got all of those out there and uh, yeah, it's looking really good. Hopefully it's all clean and decent. We've got everything laid out here. So as you can see, got all the bolts, the uh, the cams, you've got the seals on the back that we're going to be replacing as well. Um, and then, yeah, we've got the little uh, lifters here. So we've got all those in place in the order that they came out of. And the same at that end, all in order. So when I come back to do it, it's all organized and ready to go basically. Really simple, methodical, and you can't go wrong with it basically. So this is the way I've watched many and many videos of how to do it and you can't go wrong with keeping it simple basically. So that's what I've done and uh, that's what we're trying to do here basically. So nothing gets lost, nothing gets damaged, and nothing gets put in the wrong, wrong spot. So yeah. We can come back to this because, like I say, I can't do all this in one hit. So it's good for pe good practice, basically, to be able to do this. And then when I come back to this on another day, it's all in place. No one comes in here, and it's all in the same spot, and it's not going to move from there, basically. So yeah, this is what we're working with underneath the cams. And like I say, everything's looking really good, very golden, but looks like it hasn't. Um, Hasn't been off in a long, long time. All these uh, like burn singe spots here. So I'm hoping this isn't what I think. I don't know. Someone might be able to correct me if this is blow by, or um, anything similar to that. But yeah, it's a bit, a little bit crispy, if you like. So I don't know if it's got a lot of unburnt fuel in here at some point. But um, yeah, hopefully this is all good signs of good wear. It's done about 125,000 miles, I believe, this engine. That's what the speedometer says, the cluster says. And I believe, I don't know if this is the original engine that came with this car. Um, it had no history with it at all. And all that I, all I know is that the last three owners of this car, they completely ragged it, basically. It was a track car for the last three owners, at least. And I don't know if they blew an engine up replaced it because at the time those engines were really really cheap to get hold of but now they're a lot dearer so that's why I'm trying to rebuild this one rather than replace it or rebuild another one and then put that one in and then keep this one as backup if that makes sense I was trying to do that but people want silly silly money they want like 500 pound plus for some of these engines now and a lot of them have just been sitting in someone's shed uh, rusting away, rotting away with crap and rust. Uh, I've seen sawdust all over ones. So you have no idea on the condition and there's generally a good reason why they've taken the engine out in the first place. You know, 80% 80, 80 or so, there is going to be problems with that engine. So I didn't really want to go down that route. I know the history of this one to my extent. Obviously, I know it's running. Um, and that's good enough to obviously then rebuild. So... That's what we. What, that's why we're doing this. We got loads and loads of parts that have come in. Um, we got this one here uh, with all new gaskets or reducer gaskets. So this is a full head, um, full engine rebuild gasket kit. We've got a approved catalytic converter with gasket kit, and then we got all of the seals. We got all the. Uh, um, sensors for the block. As far as I could, aware, as far as far as I'm aware, uh, I've got all of the sensors for this engine, all the gaskets. We've got Victor Rain's um, gasket maker. We've got two of them. We've got exhaust gasket maker. So yeah, I've just gone absolutely mad on it and tried to get as many parts as I can for this as possible. And hopefully we haven't missed anything. There probably is, but. Like I say, I've tried. This is why it's taken so long to do a video. I've got, I've had to build up all these parts that have taken so long to get, and then working on it at weekends, bits and pieces. Yeah, 
it, it takes time basically that's what I'm trying to get at. but um, yeah let's try and get the valves out now and we'll go from there so yeah we've got all the inlet ones along here all the exhaust ones along the back here and uh, hopefully we get no bothers so I've actually managed to get a really crafty little tool which is really helpful hopefully for getting these out without having to use the long arm um, spring compressor like these little spring compressor um, valves so I've managed to get hold of if I can find it a tool which I believe is I think in here um, I'll come back in a sec right guys so yeah we've got some bits in here we've got a lapping tool we've got some assembly lube and then we got some cutting paste so you got a coarse and a fine one of those so that'll be done at some point and then we've also got this tool here which I'm hoping is going to work really well so it's a Lyle 360 free 36,050 and um, basically what you need is I've already got obviously the other one out here so you've got this here and what you do apparently is you smack that onto there and you smack that with a hammer that'll take the retainer off and the collets and the magnet inside will grab that and then all you need to do is put a rag underneath the valve that is coming out of so it doesn't push the valve through and this can take it out in one hit, done, and you haven't got to use that C-arm to actually take it out. So I'm hoping this will work. You've got the other piece here, which is the when you reinstall it, basically you need this half, but you only need this half for taking it off. So we're going to put that aside. So yeah, you can either push this, apparently, or you can smack it with a hammer, but you probably might need to smack it with a hammer. But yeah, we're going to give this a go and uh, see how it works. There we go, so let's grab the uh, retainer just there. So we'll put these facing down, top of there. We'll get another magnet for the, uh, the collets inside. That's not strong enough. And then we can basically grab these out from here there we go so you can see they're tapered so the bottom is tapered oh. and you'll be able to see on there as well there's a little groove on on the uh, the wider part there's a little groove there that that's to, to grab the bottom of the valve so it seats nicely in there basically but yeah so we're going to take these all out do them uh, do them all, put them in order on our bench over this side. Yeah, we'll put them in order, put them on the bench over this side. <clears throat> and then hopefully that's all the uh, valves out. And uh, we can go from there basically. So yeah, we're going to get these out and we'll go with that. spring <clears throat> so we've got two springs in here got a, I'm guessing from what I've seen is these are a helper spring and then that's the main spring there basically so that just sits in there like so And uh, yeah, as easy as that, just got to do uh, 15 more. We've managed to get eight of them out already, We're starting on the uh, ninth one here for the exhaust valves. And all it is basically this collector here, whatever you want to call it, the keeper, collector, holder, I don't know what it's called, but basically this piece here sits on top of the spring 
and then the collets that are inside it these little keepers here that are inside there there's two halves of it and uh, they stop the valve falling right through basically so that's your valve there and you can see that there's a little groove on the end and the collets basically pinch that on both sides and then that stops it falling through basically that's what actually holds them in place and you can see see the uh, the valve stem seals just through there as well at the very bottom but uh, like I say this side's completely done and then all we need to do is do this side so that's what we've got there and then that's with it completely taken off and then we've got two springs inside and then all I need to do is take those springs out like so and uh, yeah we bring them over here and I've just been balancing them on the cam cover like so and then we know that one we know that one there that spring is for that one there the first one so we're just working in lines working in rows methodically and uh, trying to keep it as simple as possible so nothing gets lost or forgotten so yeah I'm gonna crack out the rest of these and uh, yeah I definitely recommend this tool if you are looking to do this it is a little pricey it come from the States and uh, it, uh, I think in the end it was about seventy pound. I think it was for the uh, for this tool and all the uh, the import charges and things like that. But it looks like it will do a great job, and it already has. It's you know this has taken me probably I've you know I've never done this before, and uh, this has already taken I don't know five ten minutes to do half of it. So it's dead simple, it's just tedious and methodical, but you just got to be careful of seeing I'm trying to not drop it on the floor or anything like that. And then obviously it recommends these, so you don't want one of these flinging off at you under the, the tension that they're under. So definitely don't want to lose an eye. So yeah, we're going to bang out the rest of these and uh, I'll show you what I've done when I've taken them all out and then we can hopefully flip the head. And take the exhaust valve, well we push the exhaust valves and the inlet valves out the other end and we can take them off and start cleaning them at some point but that will probably be on another video so like I say you probably won't want to see that and I'll probably leave that for the next video anyway but yeah that's basically me stripping the head guys um, just take your time there's no rush and uh, hopefully you can get things done properly and, and uh, everything goes well and smoothly that way so yeah if you like the video guys don't forget to leave a like subscribe if you're new around here and uh, if I don't see you before then have a good Christmas and uh, I'll see you in the new year so thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one